Banjolix, how are you doing? And today I'm painting a new scene from uh, another old game, Shadow of the Beast 2. It's the end screen uh, when your character dies and um, you get this cool piece of art. And it was a really cool music with it um, that looked like your, your character was being struck by, I don't know, light or either the light was shooting out of him. I, I, I never actually fully understood what it, it was, but uh, it's a tough piece to <laughs> even attempt. But uh, yeah, yeah, I decided to try it anyway. And what I'm doing here is I'm just defining my background. So we see there's a lot of sort of pink and purple and blue mixed together. Um, and I'm just, um, instead of blending it smoothly, I'm sort of blending it in a rough, very rough fashion so that it sort of creates this sort of mist coming from the, the, the ground uh, as opposed to have uh, atmosphere build up within, you know, with the distance so you get this kind of reddish pinkish hue coming from the ground as if it's sort of almost toxic or you know this, this fumes coming out i never actually fully understood what the painting was supposed to be but um yeah uh, i think as far as i know this was done by uh, stephen hammond who was the um the artist at uh, psygnosis uh, and uh, it very much inspired by the work of uh, of roger dean who is um who's huge inspiration um, even though it doesn't really show in my work but anyway so I'm just building a, a background layers at this stage I'm not actually just defining uh, elements I'm just uh, I'm, I'm just well creating you know the the, uh, the the scene or the background scene uh, right now I'm at the stage now where I, I can start drawing the uh, the first range of mountains that you see uh, on the horizon um, so I'm, I'm using the same technique I use for the um, for the wonder boy and any other uh, painting really is that I am using the base color um, slightly slightly darker than my uh, that my horizon cloud um, color and then building on top of that um, I also add anything that's going to be at the back at this stage so uh, there's a there's a, a lightning and then the hue for that ray that's coming out of the uh, character and um, just sort of defining the area where the, the planet is going to be in the background. Uh, I will actually just refine and go over all these as I go again, the planet especially, uh, because for some reason my, my paint just wouldn't stick. Blue and red are are very hard color. As soon as you put any blue on it as a background, it will actually show through. It's a very, very intense and strong color, so it's really hard to cover fully. So uh, make sure if you use blue that you, 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 you're, you know exactly that it's you know it's gonna show through any other layers unless you use black over it and but it's really hard to get rid of it so here you see I'm just using that uh, same red color just darker and darker um, to darken it I usually add uh, a dark blue to it or just that pure red and never darken a color using uh, black pure black because it will actually s just dirty your color and uh, black should be used really on its own f at the end for effect but never as a as a medium to mix uh, to darken a color for the same reason as white shouldn't be used as a, a, a pure color to a lighten the color it's just they're too strong and they will either fade completely fade your color or just dirty it that yeah it's never a good idea so here you can see as the mountain ranges comes towards the front they're becoming a lot more blue i'm actually working towards a, a, a full brown but in the original painting there's this one range that's slightly more blue um, you don't want anything totally uniform un unless you do it on purpose but typically rocks are a different color so adding either a blue or a brown to the next range is usually a good idea so now that i have most of my background elements in place i can start on the foreground and these uh, these rocks spiky rocks that seem to come out of the ground i never knew actually if there were uh, trees or rocks maybe both after all it's an alien planet so it could be whatever whatever we we want them to be but uh right now i'm just doing the um, the outline and just using a, a a dark brown and blue mixed together uh, i have a bit of red but um I, because i apply it uh, in thin layer the the, the original red will uh, show underneath and here i am doing something that i've never shown before but i'm taking a picture of uh, of the painting uh, and the reason is that with this picture i do two things the first one is i invert it 
The reason for that is, uh, well, any artist would tell you, uh, whether you're a musician or a painter or whatever your art form is, when you're actually working on a piece, you get so involved in it that you quickly become unable to take a step back and look at the piece you've just done. Uh, unless you wait for a few days and, and look at it again, you sort of look at it with fresh eyes and, you know, any problem with the piece will become obvious. But one way to do this really quickly is to look at it either in a mirror or um, now with mobile phone, it's really quick. I take a picture, I invert it on my phone. This is something you'll see a lot of uh, digital artists do when they're painting. They actually invert the piece, work on it for a while, invert it again, work on that for a while uh, and go back and forth like that. Another thing I do is I apply a black and white filter and the reason for that is it allows me to see what the values are on my scene. So here you can see the planet sort of blends with the background a bit, a bit too much. Um, values are essentially how bright or dark your colors are in relation to each other. So you could have completely different colors from what you'd expect. You sometimes see portraits that have some unexpected colors for flesh tones, but the values are correct. Uh, essentially, if they were turned in black and white, they would still work. Uh, and that's the reason why they work. The values are correct, independent of the uh, colors. Anyway, I have a tendency to talk too much, so let's get on with our painting. Um, so uh, I have, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the uh, layout and values of my painting, and I can start refining the details on the foreground. Um, now these are really sort of interesting rocks uh, I find, so I'm just trying to um, mimic the feel of the original. So I'm going to work in small increments of uh, color. So I'm starting with um, a, a sort of gray um, based on the uh, on the brown I used. Uh, the brown I use is Van Dyke brown. It's it's a very commonly um, used brown. It actually works for a lot of stuff, and I'm using uh, small bits of titanium buff just to uh, lighten it. So um, I'm just sort of going as I feel, I get a feel for the rocks. I'm not actually just copying exactly um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the painting here, but um, uh, more as I put my first layer, I sort of get a feel for where the second layer should be. And I'm just uh, working in increments of, uh, of light. I add a bit of red as well, just to get that pinkish hue um, in my in my color. Uh, I'm using the same technique I use for any detailing really. I, I just let the first layer sort of guide where the next one should be. So, um, and I, I don't necessarily apply all the layers in the same spots exactly. Um, I skip some areas and I go over them again with the next uh, next uh, color. Uh, it just makes things a bit more organic looking and, and natural. Um, this color I apply is, is, is very bright pink and it just makes the uh, the previous layer as well pop out really um, and here I'm applying the uh, the final detail so I, I only apply the highlights in uh, in f very few places in fact um, because they're exactly like they're, they're highlights and they should only enhance uh, enhance the piece and now the uh, the dreaded moment uh, I'm not very good with figure drawing in general um, although I think I did okay this time but uh, uh, I start drawing the um, the uh, the outline for the uh, figure of the character uh, I use uh, white for this uh, diluted white uh, the reason being that if I make a mistake I can actually just um, go over that very easily if it's black it'll show through whatever color I uh, I, I apply over to just to hide it, but um, it, it worked out the first time around. I just took my time actually um, doing it, and from there I uh, I define where my shadows are going to be. Uh, there's different ways to to paint uh, stuff like that, um, but for character I usually like to um, to put the shadows first uh, of the skin and then put the highlights and then fill the uh, gaps in between. Now, it's really important to understand when you deal with skin tones that n the first um, layers of paint you put will never be your final uh, colors. Um, here, I'm just uh, I'm just defining my shadows, my uh, light areas, and 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 using these as guidelines for the next layer. So they will actually be painting over completely. But um, it's really important to do that, um, and you you'll actually get proper volume. Now you notice I use very little uh, pink. Actually, I use pink at one point just um, as a way to um, to get a line between the, uh, the the lighter and darker tones here, but um, and blend them together. But the skin is rarely pink. You know, it's, it's a lot more um, sort of 
beige and yellow sort of white um then uh, and brown and then actually pink um so uh, yeah it, it's a mix and blend of different colors so don't just use one color for skin and um i use van dyke brighton here and uh, i use um again the titanium buff because i use them in the other paintings so uh, in the background sorry of this painting so uh, it's important these colors are reflected as well in the skin you know uh, what, what lights the character is everything around him and it's it's reflected and bounce colors so all these colors have to be present on the on the skin as well uh, as you can see it's not a it's not a perfect uh, skin tone body but it works uh, mostly because the um, colors are related to each other um, in the picture um, so now at this point I'm happy enough with the uh, the body I just um, some brown for the uh, for the um, underpants and <laughs> the hair and um, man I wouldn't like those underpants they don't look like the cover much but anyway and uh, he's uh, he's kneeling on a patch of grass um, not detailing the grass very much here uh, just some highlights and some some uh, darker um, darker uh, green because it's actually not a focus of uh, point of focus of the scene and uh, I'm uh, at the stage where I'm putting uh, finishing touches um, that ray of light that seems to be hitting the character um, apologies for my body it's in the way here but uh, unfortunately I don't have a lot of space to put the camera and um, some people have suggested I put it uh, on the other side but it wouldn't work either I uh, would actually in entirely cover the uh, the uh, the camera with my body and uh, on this side it's it seems to be the best uh, the best angle i can get anyway anyway thanks for watching guys i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, maybe it prompted you to start painting on your own as well so uh, um if you've done anything actually send me the photos i'd love to showcase them at the end of these videos if you're new to the channel don't forget you can subscribe so you don't miss a new video and if you want to support the channel i have a patreon now dedicated just to the paintings um i actually want to start painting a lot more than uh, than i have been in recent years i i sort of got the bug in me again but uh, i just don't want to go the gallery road again i did that for years and it, it ruined it uh, i ended up painting stuff i didn't really want to paint anymore so having the option to um, paint uh, video game stuff or anything really I fancy without having to worry about selling the painting for a nitrageous price would be awesome indeed. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.